A lawyer gathered all the Gomez's in the office to read the will of Mr. Gomez's mother. I didn't understand why I had been invited there as well. I was just a maid. Then the lawyer opened the envelope with the will and we all held our breath. The will says Mrs. Margaret Gomez left her entire fortune and this mansion to her maid, Charlotte. <gasps> what To me? That news left me speechless. The rest of the family was no less shocked. Everyone glared at me with eyes full of hatred. You swindler, we'll sue you. I thought we were friends. You bit the hand that fed you. They shouted and interrupted each other, and then they came at me like a pack of rabid wolves. My blood ran cold. I backed up against a wall, and I mentally begged for someone to come to my rescue. The door suddenly swung open, and Michael appeared like a hero from a Korean drama. My knight in shining armor stood in front of me. I'll save you from these greedy scumbags. He grabbed my hand, and we ran out of the mansion like bats out of hell. We got on Michael's bike, and we drove off into the sunset. The Gomez's were literally left in the dust and could only shake their fists and shout after us. <coughs> this isn't over, Charlotte. Hi. As you've probably already guessed, my name is Charlotte. Let me explain everything you just saw. To do that, let's go back to the beginning of my story. But first, please like this video and subscribe to the Private Diary channel. The only family I had was my dad and my younger brother, Thomas. We loved each other, but we were always struggling because we were poor. So poor that we barely had enough money to buy food. I decided to get a part-time job to help my family. And soon, a job posting caught my eye. Mm -hmm. The Gomez's, local millionaires, were looking for a maid who could work at their mansion. That was exactly what I was looking for. I came to the mansion to apply for the job. Imagine my surprise when I saw a whole crowd of other applicants, mostly girls my age. As I listened to the chatter around me, I realized they were there to hit on Mr. Gomez's son called Chris. I heard he's as handsome as a Greek god. And I heard Chris is a heartthrob and changes girls like socks. <laughs> I wasn't interested in some rich guy. I came there to get a job. The interview was conducted by Mr. Gomez himself. He invited the candidates into his office one at a time. The wildest thing was that each of the girls ran out of there in tears and left the mansion in a hurry. My stomach was in knots. What kind of monster was sitting in that office? Soon came my turn. Charlotte, come on in. I plucked up the courage and I followed him in. But instead of a monster, I saw a tiny wrinkled old lady inside. In addition to cleaning the mansion, if we hire you, you will be tasked with taking care of my mother, Margaret Gomez. No problem. I wouldn't be so sure about that. She's got a temper and can be a lot to handle. After he said that, the old woman <gasps> spat out her false teeth on the floor and commanded me to pick them up and wash them. Ew. Well, what are you waiting for? Get to it or get out of here. Now I knew why all the previous girls had been driven to tears. I wanted to snap back at the woman, but I got a grip on myself and reminded myself I was there for my family. So I just smiled politely and did everything the mean lady asked me to. Here, I've cleaned your dentures. Mr. Gomez approved. He dismissed the other applicants and said I was hired. Then he introduced me to the rest of his family, namely his stunning aristocratic wife and gorgeous son called Chris. Welcome to the Gomez Mansion, Charlotte. He also had a daughter, a girl my age called Alice. I'm sure we'll get along. They seem like nice people and they made a good impression on me. So the next day I came to work in a great mood. As soon as I arrived at the mansion, I saw that everyone was crowding around the old lady's bed. It seemed like she wasn't feeling well. Ah, I feel it. My time has come. Oh, were they all there to say goodbye to her? She saw me and asked me in a weak voice to make her some tea with lemon. In a few minutes, I brought her a cup of tea. Child, come closer. What is it, Mrs. Gomez? This tea tastes like dishwater. I've never drunk anything worse. She threw the cup to the floor and perked up. To my shock, she no longer looked like she was dying. Get lost, everyone. I've changed my mind about dying. Her relatives trudged out of the room. I was beyond confused and asked Alice what was happening. It's nothing new. My moody grandmother puts on a performance each time she doesn't like something. She also likes to say she'll disinherit us if we don't cater to her every whim. Wow, Margaret Gomez sure was something. After everyone had left, I got to clean the living room. All of a sudden, a motorcycle drove up to the mansion. A sullen, handsome guy covered in tattoos looked around warily and then climbed inside the mansion through a window. I panicked and threw a dirty rag at him. Ah, there's a thief here. Why are you yelling? Stay back or, or I'll hit you with this. I grabbed a small family portrait to the Gomez's and I swung it at the stranger, but he oh. effortlessly snatched the portrait out of my hands, smirked, and then leaned toward me and whispered in my ear, chill out, hottie. I just need to pick up some of my stuff. 
I used to live here, see? That shameless guy with bottomless eyes and a charming smile pointed at the portrait in his hands. It was only then that I noticed he was also in it. Wait, are you at Gomez too? Before he could say anything, Chris stormed into the living room, spitting mad. Michael, what are you doing here? We forbid you from coming back to the mansion, you traitor. Get out of here and don't scare Charlotte like that again. Oh, brother. The poor thing is more likely to get scared of your ugly mug. Say that again, I dare you. Huh? They scowled at each other so fiercely, I thought they were about to get into a fight. But then Michael laughed and said he would never step foot in the mansion again. Before crawling back out the window, he whispered in my ear again, Charlotte, this family will turn your life into a living hell. Run while you still can. After Michael had left, Chris breathed a sigh of relief and said that that was his brother. Michael is a disgrace to our family name. Dad gave him money for college, but Michael used it to open a lousy tattoo parlor and fell out with everyone in the family. Grandma was so mad, she cut him out of her will. Chris looked at me with his piercing eyes and told me to stay away from Michael. Trust me, he's nothing but trouble. I spent the day watching the Gomezes. They seemed like nice people. Michael shouldn't have badmouthed them. That evening, I came back home exhausted. My brother Thomas said he'd been chosen to represent his school at a competition in England thanks to his recent performance. Wow, that's amazing news! Why do you look so sad, though? The participants are supposed to pay for flight tickets to England and accommodation themselves. I know we can't afford it. I'm just sad I won't be able to go. Cheer up. Your big sis will get you those tickets. Thomas pulled me into a tight hug. The next day, I went back to the millionaire's mansion after classes. I liked working there, but looking after that capricious old lady was hard. She kept grumbling and making impossible demands. When we went for a walk in the garden, the old lady complained that the sun was bothering her. Don't just stand there, do something. I could bring you sunglasses. I don't want sunglasses, they make me look old. Make the sun hide behind the clouds. I hid my annoyance behind a polite smile and tried to find a place in the shadow for Mrs. Gomez. But as soon as I turned away, the old lady started screaming that she'd seen a clown in the bushes. Charlotte, that clown creeps me out. I looked around, but I didn't oh. see anyone. What the heck? I told Mr. Gomez about that weird moment later. Oh, don't worry about that, Charlotte. My mother is very old. Her mind plays tricks on her sometimes. I agreed that that was probably the most logical solution. But when I was cleaning the mansion again, I saw Alice putting a clown costume away. Did you hide in the bushes to scare your grandmother? All right, you got me. Why would you do that? I'm sick of Granny's temper tantrums. She's already cut Michael out of her will, and now she keeps threatening to disinherit me too. If everyone thinks she's crazy, she won't be able to change her will anymore. Speaking of that, Alice's eyes were twinkling slyly when she asked me to help her drive her grandma insane. I will pay you, of course. You won't regret it. Her suggestion took me by surprise. I really needed the money, but I wasn't gonna get my hands dirty and get involved in that mess. It was hard, but I told Alice I wouldn't do it. This isn't over. You'll regret it. Mm -hmm. I felt uneasy, so I decided to tell someone about Alice's plans. Out of all the Gomez's, I had the best relationship with Chris, so I sought him out. Greed's gone to my sister's head. I'll deal with it. Thank you for telling me about this, Charlotte. Chris smiled sweetly at me and tucked a strand of hair behind my ear. Oh, it was so sweet my heart skipped a beat. Meanwhile, things at home had gone from bad to worse. When I came home from work, Thomas was crying like a baby. He told me dad had been taken to a hospital. My heart felt like it was gonna burst out of my chest. I rushed to the hospital and I was told my father had been diagnosed with a serious illness. The treatment was extremely expensive. I felt like sobbing, but I had to pull myself together. Don't worry, dad. I'll work hard and I'll pay for your treatment. Thanks, sweetie. You're an angel. The next day, I came back to the mansion. Tolerating the antics of the obnoxious old lady was getting harder and harder by the day, but I couldn't give up. My father's life was at stake. Charlotte, make me that disgusting tea with lemon of yours again. Hurry up. All right, I'll be back. I went to the kitchen to make tea and turned away for just a second mm -hmm. to read a text from my brother. When I turned back, I saw Chris putting some sort of pill into the teacup. Hey, what do you think you're doing? It's not what you're thinking, Charlotte. Grandma refuses to take her medications for no good reason, so we have no choice but to put them in her tea. Here, you can give it to Grandma now. Hmm. hmm, it didn't seem like Chris was lying, but my gut was telling me that something was wrong. So at the last second, I yanked the cup out of the old woman's hands and I didn't let her take a sip from it. Mrs. Gomez, I forgot to add lemon. Let me make you another cup. At that moment, Alice walked into the room. She saw the tea and drank it all before I could say anything. After that, she quickly grew sleepy and started to fall. I feel so strange. 
Luckily, Chris and Mr. Gomez came running to the noise. Alice's dad caught her before she could fall to the floor and carried her away to her room. Charlotte, clean up here and don't ask any questions. But I wanted answers! I looked at the broken cup. It was obvious Chris had put some sort of sedative in his grandma's tea. When I confronted him about it, he didn't even try to deny it. Yesterday we fought again, but she threatened to cut me out of her will again. I decided to help her calm down a bit. Then he smiled slyly and asked me to help him. Of course, he offered me quite a lot of money for it. Even though I needed it more than ever, I didn't bend my morals. No, Chris, I'm not getting involved in this. You really disappointed me. I disappointed a maid, huh? However will I survive that? I felt like someone had spilled hot garbage all over me. They disgusted me. I didn't want to work for people who were willing to do anything for the sake of money. But I had to endure it for my dad and my brother. I went home in a terrible mood and I stopped by a coffee shop to buy a caramel cappuccino and cheer myself up. To my surprise, I recognized one of the guys standing in line for coffee. It was Michael. He recognized me too and smiled at me. Oh, hi, Charlotte. Do you enjoy working for my crazy family? Are you kidding me? It sucks. Their dirty tricks are driving me up the wall. The things they're doing just to get their hands on the inheritance are insane. Well, you can always quit, right? No, I can't. My dad is seriously ill and I need money for his treatment. We drank our coffees as we stood next to Michael's bike. He nodded understandingly as he listened to me and said that he had never fit in with his family. None of them love grandma. They all just want her money. I tried to get grandma out of that house, but dad wouldn't let me do it. He kicked me out and turned granny against me. After that, she even cut me out of her will. Not that I care about it. Wow, looks can be deceiving. You seem dangerous, but you're actually a good guy. You seem like a nice girl too. Our hands accidentally touched and we both turned red as lobsters. Mm -hmm. And then Michael asked me for a favor. There's a folder with tattoo sketches in grandma's room. I can't get it back because my family won't let me into the mansion. Can you find it for me? Michael turned out to be the only good person in his family, and I really liked him, so I agreed to help. When I walked into Mrs. Gomez's room the next day, the old lady was laying in bed and looking at a family photo with sadness in her eyes. A bunch of greedy fools. I didn't raise them right. My son and his wife are cheating their clients. My grandchildren are slackers who don't know the value of money. All I wanted was for them to get along and open a family restaurant. I comforted Mrs. Gomez, and for the first time, we had a heart to heart. Thank you, Charlotte. You're a good girl. With those words, she fell asleep. I opened her chest of drawers and started to look around for the folder with sketches that Michael had mentioned. This is weird, there's no folder here. Then I heard a strange noise outside the window. Before I could move away from the chest of drawers, Mr. Gomez burst into the room and started yelling at me. Why the hell are you going through her things? Get out of here. Ugh, I'd had it with those jerks. I came back home and I watched the rain outside the window all evening. I had a terrible feeling that something bad was about to happen. The next morning, I found out that Mrs. Gomez had passed away during the night. I could barely hold back tears at the memorial service. Mrs. Gomez's family was truly nasty. They were greedily rubbing their hands together and arguing over the inheritance the entire time. I was glad that at least Michael wasn't involved in their schemes. Lately, I'd been thinking about him a lot. He seemed like a noble and honest guy. A few days went by. I was cleaning up at the mansion when Mrs. Gomez's lawyer suddenly came in and said it was time to read her will. Finally! For some reason, I was also invited into the office with them. We finally got to that part of the story that you saw at the beginning. The lawyer said that Mrs. Gomez had left me her entire fortune. Upon hearing that, her devious family seemed ready to pounce on me. I saw you rummaging through her chest of drawers. You must have switched the will. You swindler, we'll sue you. I backed up against a wall, but then my tattooed hero burst into the room. I'll save you from these greedy scumbags. We got on Michael's motorcycle and escaped. Soon, we were sitting on the beach and watching the sunset. Thank you for coming to my rescue. I'm so glad that you weren't fighting for the inheritance. Well, actually, I was, my dear naive Charlotte. And if you don't give up the inheritance and leave it all to me, you'll end up in jail. I was speechless. He smirked and turned on an audio recording on his phone. I heard my own voice saying that I really needed money for my father's treatment. And then he showed me a video of myself rummaging through the chest of drawers in his Grammy's room. That's what I had heard outside the window. It had been Michael. He was furious with his grandmother for disinheriting him. I have enough evidence to accuse you of switching her will. When you came to work for us, I immediately realized my insufferable granny would leave everything to you to teach her family a lesson. But I've outsmarted everyone. He said I would either ensure the money went to him or end up behind bars. If you keep your mouth shut, I'll give you enough money for your father's treatment. That bastard. Michael was even worse than the rest of his family. 
still, I had no choice but to agree to his terms. Immediately after that, we went to the lawyer's office, and I said that I wanted to give up my inheritance. I knew you'd come. Before you do that, I want you to take a good look at this, Charlotte. Then, he turned on a video Mrs. Gomez had left for me. She recorded it shortly before her death. In the video, she confirmed that she had changed the will of her own free will, and I had done nothing wrong. Charlotte, thank you for putting up with my antics. You deserve this money more than my family does. Be happy. I burst into tears. Michael realized that his plan had failed and stormed out. Soon, Mrs. Gomez's last wish was fulfilled, and I got the money. I used it to help my father and my brother. I left the mansion to the Gomez's, though. I didn't want that snake nest. After a while, I brought flowers to Mrs. Gomez's grave, and I thanked her for everything. I'll use that money to fulfill your dream and open a family restaurant, and I'll name it Margaret in your honor. 